What's up guys, it's your host Spartanic Arts DxD back with another high school DxD related video. Today we have What If Issei Went Solo Part 4. Let's try to hit a thousand likes and if you guys want to know exactly when I upload slash my upload schedule, click the little blue button right next to the subscribe button. Thank you guys so much for the support on this series. I'm sorry I haven't been uploading as much, just kind of going through it at the moment. So... Thank you for all the support. Let's try to hit a thousand likes. I know that's a big request, but we've been hitting it like every time I finally up the like goal because these people are crazy with the support. Thank you so much. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. Chapter 15, Gift in Little Kid. Sir Zex is in his office with Graphia the following day. I was thinking about everything that Issei went through up until now. He saved Rias again and stopped another from war breaking out between the three factions and nearly died if it wasn't for Kuroka. I should do something to compensate him and help Kuroka, Suzek said. You already made Kuroka a free devil and cleared all of her charges, but Issei definitely deserves something, Grafia replied. But the question is, what, Suzek said. Suzek and Grafia started thinking. Suzek takes out one of the pawn pieces that he borrowed from Team Rias. He just stared at it and then... I got it, Sir Zex said. Grapia nearly clung to the ceiling from this sudden exclamation. First of all, never scare me like that again. Two, what do you got? Grapia said. She jumps down. Sorry, but I have an idea. Why don't we promote Issei to a high class devil? He's stronger than one and his contract reviews are through the roof. He's clearly loved by almost everyone and is already a legend in the underworld, Sir Zex said. That's actually a perfect gift. I'm surprised your idiotic self thought of it, she teased. I didn't see you coming up with any ideas, honey. Ha. Huh. Shots fired. And then Grafia hits Sir Zex. Ouch, Sir Zex said. Sir Zex and Grafia talked to Ajuka and Azazel and Sona's older sister, Seraphal Leviathan, who was a fellow Devil King. All were informed of the Issei's heroic actions and came to the agreement it was decided that Issei will be promoted. As a bonus, it was also decided that Issei will be given a rare forbidden piece. The King Piece. Why? Simple. Issei suffered for years because he was weak. Nearly died several times protecting the others. Years of pain and abuse caused him to snap at those who hurt him, but he controlled his dragon rage. This was a feat itself, and it still chose to help him in the time of need even if he didn't want to. If anyone deserved this power, it was him. Never again will he be unable to protect the others or himself. Now, scene break, we're back to Issei in the morning. Issei and Kuroko wake up. They were still in each other's arms. That alone was enough proof that they both had the best sleep of their lives so far. Morning, cat. Morning, my little dragon, Kuroko replied. Want some breakfast? Always. That would be the best night's sleep I've ever had. I honestly didn't want to get up, Kuroko said. Issei stretched his limbs and wings. Same here, but I'm hungry. I really had anything to eat since before the fight. No, the gross hospital food doesn't count. I want to eat real food, so I'll get started on breakfast, Issei said. Issei makes breakfast while Kuroka freshens up. Overall, it was a pretty uneventful, peaceful morning. Both decided to keep Issei's wings a secret for now. One more change has occurred. Issei's horns released flames from normal yellow to red. As both of them finished eating, Issei saw a look of confusion on Kuroka. What's bothering you? Issei said. Kuroka snaps out of her train of thought. Hmm. My bad. It's nothing, Kuroka said. I can tell there's something up with you. There's no point in hiding it. Tell me. Issei said. Fine. Yesterday when I told Sharone the truth, she still looked like she hated me. She's young. She needs time. I would know, Issei replied. I haven't seen her in five years, and back in the hospital was the only time she hugged me. That means you're still her big sister and she clearly missed you. You just need time to process and accept it. She knows the reason behind your disappearing act, Issei replied. Hello, Mr. Kettle, Mr. Pot called. He says you're black. Ha. Huh. SAO Bredge reference. Nice one, Issei said. Thank you. I think we should talk about Konoko and spend time with her. That might speed things up. Good idea, Kuroko said. We can start after Konoko finishes her classes. Maybe you can train her in Senjutsu. That would be perfect, Kuroko replied. Both agreed to talk to Konoko after school. As the time came, both of them approached her and were honest about what they wanted to do. They went somewhere private to talk. However, Konoko was hesitant. Why train me, Konoko said. It'll be a chance for us to catch up and you to accept your Nekomata heritage. Konoko just sits there in silence. Konoko, if ha have something to say, just say it. I, I want to know. 
Kuroko just sat there. I want to know why. Why didn't you try to leave a sign? I thought you were a terrorist. I thought you abandoned me. I don't know if I can trust you. I know the truth, but accepting it is something else entirely, Konako said. Konako finally let out all of her emotions. Her expressions face finally showing all kinds of emotions. She finally cried after years of holding it in. Kuroko just hugged her, and then both stayed silent. Issei watched Konako, but she had caught his attention. Konako called his sister a terrorist, and he'll ask about that later. I know you're angry, and you have every right to be, but I was scared that if I tried anything that you would be in danger again. We both got off lucky last time, so that's why I couldn't risk it. I'm sorry, Kuroko replied. <sighs> well, it all wasn't that bad. Sir Zex and Grafia gave me a, a home, and I was doing okay, Konako said. I'm just glad things are finally looking up. Yeah, Issei, there's something I want to say. Yeah? I'm sorry. I was guilty in making your life a living hell when you joined us. You have every right to hate me, but you don't. Why? I have my reasons. The biggest one is that I just want to move on. I don't blame you, Issei said. But I want to do right by you for once, so I can make it up to you, Konako said. If you really want to make it up to me, then talk to Kuroka. Train with her and try to be sisters again. Consider it done. Really? Kuroka said. Yes, Konako replied. I can tell from your aura that you're happier now. Now let's go to the, my place and have dinner. I'm hungry. Both girls said same. The three of them went to Issei's apartment and had dinner. Konako notes that both Issei and Kuroka are happy together. They laugh together as if they have never had a care in the world. They were very close and loved each other. Seeing that, Konako finally smiled like never before. Now she was happy as well. As it got dark, Konako decided to go back to the club room. I should get going. Rius will be worried if I get there uh, before I go there. Is something I need to say, Issei? Yes? Be good to her, okay, bro? Both fist bump each other. You know I will. Kuroko almost tears up at the sight. Konako is happy to have her back. Sees Issei as her brother and he's basically forgiven her. Konako then goes to the club room. Rias sees Konako enter with a huge smile. Somebody looks happy, Rias said. Hey boss, I was with Kuroko and Issei at his apartment. We were having dinner and chatting. Oh, about what, Rias said. About everything, I see. I assume it went well, judging by your smile. I'm happy for you, Rias replied. Thanks, boss. I'm happier now than I've ever been. I used to be afraid of my neck amount of powers. But now that I know the truth, I'm going to accept it. Konako's white cat ears and tail finally appear after six years. I'm done running. Rias says to herself, Easy, you continue to change things for the better for us all. I finally saw Konako smile for real this time, and she's more open with us. Thank you. I'm proud of you, Konako, Rhea said. Shirone, I'm going back to my I'm going back to using my birth name. Is that okay, Rhea? said Konako. Yes. It's fine, Rhea replied. And that is the end of chapter 15, Gift in a Little Kitten. Chapter 16, Unwanted Attention. A month has passed and everyone continues to live their lives. Issei and Kuroka were out on a night on a date. Issei hid his dragon features and Kuroka hid her cat tail and ears. After the movie, they were walking up to the pier to enjoy the sunset. As they walked arm in arm, the two guys walked up to them and Issei recognized them. The two pervert arms were in cast and they were pissed. Remember us, asshole? Perv one says. Wish I didn't, Issei replied. Not only are our arms broken, but we got the worst beating of our lives because the girls chased us. You'll pay for that, Perv two said. Kroka looks at Issei. Babe, we'll miss it, Kroka says. Yeah, I'll make this quick. Issei walked up to the pervs and punched both of them in the gut. Before the two could even react, both were on their knees clutching their guts. Hey, honey, do you love it when I slap fools? Issei said, oh, you know I do, Kroka replied. Kroka enjoys the sight of Issei literally slapping the two perverts silly. When will you two learn? Just because you're sad about your life, you drag others down too? Just give up, you pieces of shit, Issei said. Both pervs are completely bruised and beaten again. Did you really think that you two could jump me? Ha, <laughs> Issei said. Go to hell, perv one said. Been there now? Been there. Now let me show you. Issei replied. Issei picked up the two pervs by their collars and brought them close. He showed them his green dragon eyes. Fangs let out with a deep, slow growl. Both pervers went pale and froze from beer, then pissed themselves a little bit after Issei floored his flared his aura in a way that even the two could see it. Who knew your fear smelled like piss? Gross, Issei said. Issei tossed the two in a dumpster, then walked away after changing his appearance from dragon to human. 
That was hilarious. But who were those fools again? Kuroko said. The morons that made my school life a living crap, Issei said. Oh, I remember. I saw their faces through your memories. They have nothing but lewd thoughts, it seems, Kuroko said. That's all they ever have, Issei replied. Pathetic, Kuroko said. Both made it into the pier in time and enjoyed their time together, but something caught their attention. They sensed Rias following them. She's following us, Kuroko said. Looks like I need to have another talk with her, Issei replied. No, I'll handle it. She needs to see that you don't feel the same way about her, and you tried, but clearly it didn't get through, Kuroko said. Then let's give her a reminder, Issei said. That's just cruel, Issei. I love it. Both share a deep, long kiss. Rhea saw them from a distance kissing and just turned around and walked away with a broken expression. You're happy with her, but I'm not giving up. I will win you back, Rhea said. Rias goes back home and starts thinking of a plan to convince Issei to love her. Issei and Kuroko are on their date and still will no longer sense Rias watching them. And that's the end of chapter 16, Unwanted Attention. Chapter 17, The First Fallen King. The next morning, Issei contacts everyone and tells them that Sir Zek summoned them ASAP. They all arrive at Sir Zek's office and go inside. Ah, everyone is here, right on time too, Sir Zek said. Do you have a mission for us? A stray devil again? Rias replied. Rias was hoping for one that she could fight alongside Issei. Not at all. There's going to be a ceremony, Sir Zek said. What kind? Azia replied. It's a surprise. Issei, would you please step forward? Issei is a bit confused, but does it as he told. Sir Zek gives Issei a box. Issei opens it and sees a chest set. The energy it gave off immediately and proved that they were evil pieces. They didn't? contain 15 pieces but full 16 including the king piece everyone was bewildered by it sir zex is this what i think it is isei says yes all of the higher ups have decided to give you your own evil pieces as a reward for helping us avoid another great war and no i will not accept your refusal sir zex said isei knew sir zex well enough to know that once he makes a decision he won't change his mind he looked to grayfield for aid but i said accept it dumbass isei gave up I accept. Thank you, Issei replied. Issei bows in gratitude. There's something you should know. You also have a king piece. It will increase your power far beyond your expectations, Sir Zek said. But aren't those rare and illegal? Rias replied. But considering his efforts and the kind of person Issei is, we decided that he should have this power. Why me of all people? Issei replied. Because you showed perfect control over yourself. And you care about those around you even if they hurt you. You want to protect them? With this, and you'll achieve your goal, Sir Zek said. You know me too well, Issei said. Issei smiles, and so does everybody else. Now let's move this along. Accept the king piece into you after your channel your power into it. Issei picks up the king piece from the set and channels his energy into it. It changed from glowing red to red and black. It radiated its new energy, and the other pieces changed. They mutated and are similar to the King Beast but have lower stats. Everyone looked at Issei and gave him a concerned look. Issei, that energy. Is that what we all think it is? Akino says. Issei looks at her. I guess there's no point in hiding it. Issei shows them his eight fallen angel wings. Everyone had mixed emotions except Kuroka. I know you all have the same question, but Drake explains it the best. Drake, a red gauntlet appears on Issei's left arm. I'll make it short. After Issei got the heart of a fallen transplanted into him, Kuroka's Senjutsu magic merged Issei's dragon DNA with the DNA of a fallen. As to not wreck Issei's body, rejecting the heart, his body accepted it and it was altered. Issei now has the powers of a fallen and a dragon. He's the first to be a part of both worlds, Drake said. But to have eight wings and yet none of us could sense it? Rias replied, because Issei only has the wings so far he has yet to unlock the powers i can train him with the dragon's powers but the abilities of the fallen are not part of my expertise drake said i'll teach him azazel said everyone looks behind them a man wearing a suit and had a black hair with golden bangs oh hey it's you sorry that i couldn't join for almost your whole the join you for almost your whole year azazel isei said so you knew who i was the whole time yeah I know the power of a fallen when I sense it, and your power isn't exactly small enough to hide completely, Issei replied. You got me. He laughs awkwardly. So I'll train you, but I need to know just how powerful you'll become with the king piece. I want to see, Azazel said. All right, here I go. Issei accepts the pawn piece, and it merged with his body. 
Issei's power was now a hundred times stronger, his eight wings became twelve and were bigger. They had far more power in them. Issei's brown hair turned black with a streak of blood red. His scurula turned black, but his iris remained green. Issei's gauntlet morphed. Think like the fourth liberation for context. But the round jewel on his back and hand now and had a thin golden gem with red and black energy floating in it. Boosted gear, evolution, Drake said. This power. I feel like I can do anything, Issei said. Issei, you're almost as strong as I am. This is beyond what I expected, Sir Zek said. Everyone was in awe after seeing what just transpired. Incredible. Issei, before we begin training, come to the Gregar. I want to know why the pieces mutated. You got stronger but didn't turn into a devil. Since this is the first time, we need answers. Come tomorrow, okay? Azazel said. Sure, some answers would be nice, he said replied. So you're a dragon, a fallen, and a king. I think I have a new nickname, you, my love. How about the Fallen Dragon King, Kuroka said. Was it because it suits you, or was it because I said it, Kuroka said. Why not both? Get a room, you two, everyone said. Both got caught flirting and turned red. Well, now that's all that's left is for Issei to find members in his barrage. Congrats, Issei, Sir Zek said. Everyone else also said congrats. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Issei smiled with, at all of them with no hate. Issei was really getting closer to forgiving them and moving on. Everyone went back to their daily routine. At Issei's apartment, scene break. Hey, Issei, there's something I need to do. I'll be back soon. I have to meet up with some old friends and tell them about being a free devil now. It's been close to a year since I saw them, so I'll be gone for a few days, Kuroka said. All right, honey. Call me if you need anything, Issei replied. Kuroka kisses him and leaves. Issei is alone, and now he can put his plan into action. Hey, partner, Issei said. I know what you're thinking about, and I say yes. She would be a perfect queen, wouldn't she, Issei? She truly would, Drake said. Kuroka as my queen. I can't stop smiling at the thought, Issei said. How about Kuroka as your wife, Drake said. Issei's fate went super red, and his knees began to shake. That would be... Bliss, Issei said, and Drake just laughed. And that is the end of chapter 17. Chapter 18. Training. The next day, Issei teleported to the Grigar. Ah, Issei, welcome to the Grigar, Azazel said. Thanks, it's good to be here, Issei replied. As both walk around and talk about Issei's upcoming training, another fallen angel approached them. Yo, Barkil, what's up, Azazel said. Hello, Azazel, I need a moment with Issei, Barkil said. Sure, I'll be right back. Azazel walks away. So how can I help you? Issei said. You have done more than enough, son. Barkil said. Beg your pardon? Issei replied. You saved Akino. She accepted her fallen side and she started talking to me again ever since you disappeared. She and her team were miserable and I assume it was because of your absence. But I do not want to know. But I do want to know. How and why you disappeared, Barkil said. I'll show you, but please don't hate Akino. Just know that I'm close to forgiving her, Issei said. Barkil was really concerned now, but kept an open mind. Issei showed him his memories. Barkil was now hurting inside after seeing what his daughter has become, or at least a few until months ago. I can't believe she would do that. After all you did for her, as her father, it's my duty to set her straight, Barkil said. No need. She's been punished enough, you know that, Issei replied. You're still willing to forgive after all they did? You continue to amaze me, Issei, Barkil said. I just want to move on. I was thinking about having her train with us. During her fight with Riser's Queen, she said she was barely able to win. She needs to get stronger. I just recently became a Fallen. E even I'm stronger than her, and her com team combined, Issei said. In that case, we should train together. Did you just say that you're a fallen angel? Barkil replied. Spreads his 12 wings. I have been for over a month now. But how? You were a human turned devil, Barkil said. Then I turned into a dragon to survive the evil piece removal and had a heart of a fallen implanted into me to replace my damaged one, Issei said. But we tried using artificial means to make fallen angels such as blood transfusion and organ transplants, but bodies always rejected them, Barkil said. 
You need sage magic to bond the two different types of DNA, Ezer replied. We never knew sage magic had such power, Barkill replied. Sage users exist is very few numbers, and they rarely showed their ability so it would make sense that no one thought to try it, Issei said. As the two engulfed by their conversation, they didn't even notice Azazel standing there grinning like an idiot. He was getting so much valuable info from these two. Alright you two, sorry to break up the conversation, but, Is but Issei... We have to go to Barkill and so do you. Right, sorry, both replied. Barkill goes to his office and thinks about what he just saw through Issei's memories. Issei still hated Akino and Rias for what they did and Barkill was truly disappointed in his daughter. How could she be so cruel for so long? Barkill began to cry, blaming himself for not trying to be there. He even thought Akino didn't want him around after what happened to her mother. He also thought about what Issei said. He's still willing to forgive her and even spend time training with her, but questions is, is why he still cares for her. No normal person would. You truly are a rare soul, Issei, Barkill replied. Issei and Azazel decided to start his training, his hidden fallen powers. Issei will start off by making a light spear. How do I do that? I tried, but nothing worked. The trick is to just create one. You have to visualize it. Don't try to copy any spears you've seen so far, but create your own design. Think of a shape, the type of damage, etc. Azazel said. All right, that actually helps, Issei said. Issei closed his eyes and begins to concentrate. Issei began to visualize a spear with a cyclone tip and three edges. That would actually cause the target to bleed out if the spear is removed. A truly deadly design. The... Then Issei made the bottom of the spear hollow, but with two spikes, like cat ears for reference, as to release a small flame strong enough to give it some extra power. The design was done, but Issei still had to add color to it, and then Issei smiled. He made it jet black with a tip of blood red. Issei created the spear in his palm and swing it around, each swing releasing a slow, dazzling golden flame. Azazel was blown away. Azazel could just tell the deadly how deadly the spear is after just looking at it. The perfect spear for such a being like Issei, it radiated power. That spear, wow, just wow, Azazel said. Thank you, Issei replied. The tip would kill, it would kill even without its magical properties. But why the hollow base, Azazel said. Issei smirked and ignited the base, releasing a max thrust after throwing it at the wall. It went straight through the wall, after wall. Several fallen angels screamed after nearly being impaled. Mother, fuck, son of a monkey, mommy, all the screams came. One fallen was taking a bath and the spear destroyed the floor under the tub on the front side. It began to slide downwards. No! The fallen angel said. He falls through the floor and takes the tub with him. Is it Issei and Azazel were watching through the hole. He immediately made the spear disappear, then looked at Azazel. They both just started bursting out laughing. Issei fell on his knees and Azazel held his ribs. That was freaking hilarious, Issei said. Azazel nodded after wiping his tears, then looked at the wall. It made a three-point star-shaped hole in the edges of the hole were red hot. Zazel says in his mind, I better not get on his bad side. He's already stronger than I am and did all that damage just because I asked him to. He may become one of the strongest in existence if he gets serious. All right, Issei, you clearly made a powerful spear and know how to use it. We'll skip to the physical training that includes flight, Azazel says. If you say so, Issei replies. Issei and Azazel begin training. In the first two days, Issei mastered his spear in flight. He learned to harden and sharpen his feathers, both for defense and offense, respectively. Issei would use his wings to block and would fire his feathers to cut his opponents down. Many testing dubs fell victim to it. Eventually, Barkle wanted some combat action as penance for nearly getting impaled two days ago. Issei called Akino later on because he knew that she and Barkle needed to spend time and let out their frustrations. Akino was surprised to receive a call from Issei. Issei, I'm honestly surprised that you called me. How are you? Akino said. I'm good. You? Issei replied. Akino was happy that he was finally talking to her with the little most no hatred. I'm good now. Listen, I need your help. Do you want to train together? Training? I would like that. It's about time we did some real training together, Akino said. Meet me at the Gregor. I'm with Azazel. I could use a few magic lessons. I'll be right over, Akino says. Akino teleports to the Gregor. She never liked the place, but ever since she started talking and spending time with her father, it started to grow on her. Thanks for coming, Akino. I was surprised that you called me even though we had barely spoken since you last came back. 
Yeah, but now we are both different people, so let's get started. We need to get stronger. Akino, Issei, and Barkil train together. Issei learned to use the elemental magic. Akino's holy lightning became more effective and both of their magic reserves increased. Barkil and Akino spent some time alone and talked about everything they felt. Akino finally accepted that it wasn't her father's fault that her mother was killed but those members of her clan who did the dark deed and no longer have hatred to her father but regret blaming him. Barkil forgave her and both bonded like father and daughter once again. The week was almost over. On the last day, Issei and Akino were training alone and just sat together after they both expended their energy. <sighs> training was tough, but fun, Akino said. Yeah, we both worked hard, but you did more, Issei said. Issei, you called me here for more than just training, didn't you? Akino said. Yeah, I called you to talk about your dad and really talk to him and also to apologize. Apologize? For what? Akino said. For what I said before I left. I used your past against you. It was a low blow and I'm sorry for that. Don't you dare, Akino said. She looked at Issei. I was cruel to you all these years and used training as an excuse to use my sadistic tendencies on you because I was too angry at myself and my father. You hurt me far less than I deserve, so please don't apologize. No, I do need to apologize. I was being cruel unnecessarily, Issei said. Issei, please just stop. Akino hugged him and he hugged back. He whispered in her ear, We should get along starting now. Both of us are half-breeds. Akino looked at Issei and says teasingly, why, are you asking me to be your mistress or queen? Kuroka and Rias will get jealous. Issei chuckled. Neither Kuroka is the only one I should be honest with, and I know you won't lie about what happened here, right? Issei said the last in his word in a cold tone that made sure Akino tells the truth. Ugh, Akino said. Besides, I already have my queen, and she's all that I need. I was thinking that we could be friends and for real this time. Akino fist bumped Issei and then went home. That sounds good. I'd like that. And that's the end of chapter 18 training chapter 19 the eight Issei and Akino teleported together Akino had a smile on her face from finally getting some peace hey Issei thank you Akino said for Issei replied for helping me again years ago you convinced me to use my fallen side now I know the truth about what really happened I finally accepted it and it that's all left is to do is right by you from now on Akino said I'm happy for you, Akino. I really am, Issei said. Akino nods, then gives Issei a thank you kiss on the cheek, then said teasingly, Hope your queen doesn't get jealous. Akino winked, then flew away. Queen? Yeah, that sounds perfect. Thanks, Akino, Issei said. Issei had uh, chosen his first member, Kuroka. The next day, Issei lay in his bed, listening to music and thought about how he could use his new abilities and who to add his parage. Issei sensed a very familiar presence enter his department. Hey, Han, welcome back, Issei said. Hey, babe, Kuroka replied. Kuroka ran to Issei, then jumped on his lap, then looked at him with the cutest look ever. Whatever Kuroka was about to request of Issei, there's no way he'll be able to say no to it. I know what that look means, so just say it, Issei said. Issei couldn't help but blush at his girlfriend's cute antics. Well, I went to visit some old friends, as you know, and I may have invited them over, Kuroka said. May have? That means you legit invited them, Issei said. You know me so well, love, Kuroka said. So these friends, they would happen to be of the Chaos Brigade, would they? Issei said. Kuroka's cat ears dropped. You knew? Since when? Kuroka said. Since Shirone accidentally blurted it out, Issei said. Do you hate me? Kuroka replied. Never. I love you and friends of yours are always welcome. So when are they coming? Well, the eight of them are coming next month, Kuroka said. Wait, eight? My partner is only good for two, which brings you to the next part of my request. Both said at the same time, we need a bigger ass, ha, huh? jinx. Also, fair warning, three of them crazy strong and still wanted criminals, so I was hoping that you could ask their Zex for help. Hmm, I'll see what I can do. So what did you do this week with your friends, Issei said, hung out since it's been months when I last saw them. Why wait so long to visit them? Oh, I had other prior engagements, Kuroka said. Kuroka ran her slim fingers over Issei's chest and started making out with them because why not? It's been a while. Issei then gets a call from Sir Zex. Hello? Issei, I need you and Kuroka at my office ASAP. Sir Zex hangs up. The way he spoke made them alert and teleported to his office. Sir Zex, what's going on? Issei asked in a serious tone, only to Sir Zex smiling without a care in the world. So, sorry to call you so soon, but training it couldn't wait. What couldn't? Kuroka said. Sir Zex gestured to come closer. As they did, Sir Zex teleported them to a big house in Co, one near the school. Um, why not just ask us to come here directly? We went from one part of the town to the underworld only to return to a different part of the town. Dramatic effect. 
Sir Zach said. So do you need us to do something? Issei said. Yes. Enter the house, Sir Zach replied. Both look at each other. Then they approached the door. They felt familiar, familiar, several familiar energy signatures. They opened the door and... Surprise! Both go at the same down. Huh? Welcome to your new house, Grafia said. Again, huh? Both replied. I'll explain. Since you've been back, all we wanted to do something so that both of you are the family. So we get this house. Eight bedrooms. Each room has separate bathrooms in one large bath. Just for the two of you, Rhea said. Guys, we can't possibly accept this, Kroka said. Actually, you both already own it, Grapey replied. How so? Issei said. After you defeated Riser and became a legend in the underworld, the video became so vile that people would request us to tell them about you. Edit your videos, remaster, and even create a TV show, Grapia said. All that from one match, Issei said? Yes, and since you're the Red Dragon Emperor, you have the access to copyrights and royalties. All of that paid off nicely, but we did have some of the cash to pay for production, Grapia said. Just how much are we talking about? Sir Zex pulls out a tablet and shows Issei's bank account. 50 million. Both Kuroka and Issei all that, both of their souls nearly left their bodies. Oh, no, you don't. None of us want to go through that again, Rias said. Rias grabs their souls and forces them back into their bodies. Whew, thanks, Rias, both said. You're very welcome. All of these are your personal funds, so use them as you wish. Oh, I have an idea. Drinks on us, people. Let's party, Kuroka said. Everyone said, woo! All had a party and were drunk as a single girl in the bachelorette party. So Zex and Grafia were flirty drunk, then into... Then went into one of the eight bedrooms. Azia, Sharone, Kiba, and Konika were passed out drunk. Rias was quiet but honest drunk when asked a question. Issei and Kuroka actually managed to keep their senses. Rias just kept looking at Issei as Kuroka as they have fun. Kuroka leads to go to the restroom. Rias walks over to them. Yo, Issei, can I talk to you? Rias said, sure. Look, now that you're a king and all, have you decided on your queen? Why do you ask? Issei said, because if you haven't, then please make me your queen, Rias replied. Issei did the mother of all spit takes. Rias, are you nuts? Issei replied, no, I'm serious. Make me your queen. Not gonna happen. You're a high-class devil with your own parage, Issei said. Please give me a chance. I said no, and it's final. I already have a queen in mind. It's Kuroka, isn't it? Yeah. I have no chance to earn your love, Rias said. No, Rias, I won't fall for you, and I'm sorry for that, Issei replied. I see. Then I should give up, huh? Probably better for both of us, Rias said. It's the best thing to do, Issei replied. Can you at least tell me why you want to forgive us so quickly five years of mistreatment willing to forgive us after you come back it would make more sense to hate us as hell even want us dead but you don't why don't get me wrong i still hate the shit you guys put me through but for some reason i still care about you guys i already forgave all your parage members and i'm just about ready to forgive you too isei said thank you isei as much as it hurts not being on your side the way i hoped i can be in another way just wish i could get a kiss goodbye ria said that can't happen between you and Issei, Kuroka said. Kuroka showed up and overheard Rias's last comment. Rias looked at Kuroka right in the eyes and then her lips, the ones that Issei kissed every chance he got. Sorry, but I need closure, Rias said. What are you, Kuroka? Rias grabbed Kuroka's face and straight up French kissed her. Issei dropped his beer. Rias broke the kiss and Kuroka covered her mouth. Sorry, but that was clearly as close as I'll ever get to kissing Issei, Rias said. Rias then went onto the couch and passed out. Both Kuroka and Issei go at the same time. The fuck? And that's the end of chapter 19, the 8. And that is where we're going to stop for now. So we just stopped at chapter 19 and the next part will be chapter 20. So again, thank you guys so much for your support. I know this wasn't the longest episode ever. It was around probably 33, 34 minutes. I just wanted to get another video out there. I'm sorry. I've been extremely busy and to be honest, I'm kind of going through something right now and I can't really get over it. So <laughs> thank you so much for the support. I'm, I'm no offense. Don't take this into consideration. I'm just never, I don't really like talking about my personal life on YouTube. You know, I love you guys and I just want to stay positive most of the time. So again, thank you guys for all the support. It's been absolutely amazing. The support on this series is way crazier than I ever thought it would be. So again, let's try to hit 1,000 likes. And if you guys want to join, the little blue button right next to the subscribe button is my little upload schedule thing. So again, thank you guys so much for the support, okay? Seriously, we hit 24,000 subscribers. I think we're at 24,500 right now currently. And the video will probably come out today as I'm recording it just as a little special thank you for how long I've been gone. 
and enjoy the uh, NFL playoffs. And without further ado, Spartanic Arts DxD out. See you next time.